Hello everyone, this is Venus Brown, here with another reaction to The Crown. This is Season 5, Episode 3. I think it's called Momo. This episode is a little different than a lot of The Crown episodes. Kind of like a bottle episode. You got a totally different character in here that I think is the primary focus of the episode. And it does start in the past and then moves on to the present. But a very different kind of character, very different perspective, very different stuff going on. So one of the things I remember is him trying to kind of get in with the royal family, especially the queen. But that didn't work out. And he ended up actually sitting with Princess Diana at some point when he was trying to sit next to the queen. But they actually seemed to get along pretty well. And the queen wasn't there because I think she was really trying to abstain herself from his presence. Let's get to the show. Hey, <laughs> 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 السابق اللي ساب عرشه عشان الشار مقتلع الحكايه بتاعته الانجليزي احتلوا بلدنا من سنه 1800 اللي شايفينهم اسياد الارض عشت في الانجليزي وخلاص زعلان اننا بنقول عليهم اسياد الارض عشان هم كده فعلا ثانك يو سيدني امبرست باي هيز ورك هي وانتس ذا جوب اون ذا بيرمننت the ribbons are interesting. I would expect the medallions at the bottom to kind of jingle, but they have them all completely like molded in place. Well, sometimes the children don't always go the direction you think they will. Here it is, the intro for The Crown, Season 5. If you like this content, you can go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you like, you can click the bell to subscribe. And if you click all, you'll get notifications whenever new content is loaded. You can share it or even save it to watch later if you like. That's totally up to you. It's no one else's decision, just yours. And now, here it comes, the crown. Great deal of mystery surrounding you. I heard that you and your brothers have no history of hotel ownership, nor property development. Do not listen to either rumors and concentrate on our offer. $18.6 million. Significantly higher than any of our rivals. Yes, but their money is guaranteed. Emirates. I must confess my disappointment. Hoping to be treated on merit. To rescue a hotel can no longer rely on her reputation or beauty. <laughs> Whose customers are deserting her in droves. I'm sorry that you have chosen Look at that. That's a cool one. Well, that ought to be an interesting turn of events. Talk about discrimination. Ballet to Edward VIII. See, sometimes your stereotyping and snap judgments turn out to be very misled. His Royal Highness taught me everything. Will you teach me? In which capacity? <laughs> As my personal valet. With your help. I will become that rare thing, a British gentleman. 
Dozen writers you have to read if you are ever to understand the English. Woodhouse? Rudyard Kipling? Not a task to hurry through. It's really kind of interesting. In both situations, he's a servant. In the first situation, he's being taught by the Duke. And in the second situation, he's the one teaching the person that's hiring him on. I don't know. I still feel like he's kind of being used in both situations. I mean, of course, anybody in a situation like that is being used, but it's just like, um, what is that word? What is the word I'm thinking of? Now, that is a game I am truly passionate about. Passionate was not very talented. Passionate was not very talented. He learned his swing from the great <clears throat> champion, Percy Boo. Was his polo? Why do the passionate just... Not very talented. In British society begins and ends with the royal family. If you are seen in their company, if you are known and trusted by them, then all doors will open. May we see your ID? Huh? What? But I have the members ticket. Our fire is a new member. Yeah. Some gentlemen want to come through. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. All right, getting dinner. I'll be back. Food is out of the oven. It's just cooling off. And I'll get back to it when I'm done here. You can't enter unless you remember anything. Eh? Oh. I made a fortune for these tickets. They told me I would be close to the queen. You are. Who is there? I'm sponsor for this event. <laughs> Sitting next to the queen is his privilege. I hope that still leaves enough for me to do what I want. Nansua. Motion pictures. I have ideas. I have instincts, and I have a right. So this is a movie set? Where are the girls? The film is not the movie. Where are the girls? Inspirational story. Where the outsider ends up becoming an insider. Exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> Here it comes. The Mad Company Warner Brothers. Chariots of Fire. And there it is in my background right there. We won, we won. I won, we won. I won. <laughs> Sometimes our kids can make us proud in very different ways than we ever envision. And that's how it should be. They should be inspiring and making us proud in their own way, not how we want them to. I just received news. The Duchess of Windsor died this morning. <laughs> Sit down. So sad. Rain getting in through the ceilings, walls black with soot. There was so much happiness here. The Duke and Duchess's possessions, including his diaries. Fate of the house and its possessions is now in the hands of the French authorities. <laughs> he just finds his ways to insert himself. When I saw this tape, the villa was in, I said, money is no object. Restoring it will be my honor, no matter the cost, it will be my gift to the British royal family. <laughs> has invited you to pay the renovated property a visit. Don't you dare. If it was controversial for me to visit when my uncle was alive, I'd say there's even less reason when he's dead. It seems there are all manner of valuable possessions at Villa Windsor, which we feel it would be important for the Crown to have back. The baby prince. That belongs to the royal collection. Uh, the Duke's garter banner. And that should be returned to the royal collection. Queen Mary's pearls. They belong to... Me. A correspondence from the time of the abdication and the Duke's diaries. They wouldn't bring themselves to go after he died, yet they were okay with going to his wife's funeral after she died. And this 
stuff like this happens in real families. People die and they do stupid nonsense after the person dies when it comes to the estate and everything left and can't expect the royal family to be any different than anybody else when it comes to that stuff, I guess. It's just, I don't know, the ongoing hurt feelings and unwillingness to leave things where they were. Yeah, he did a lot of fucked up shit. It screwed things over for a lot of people, but it's about forgiving them for things that caused real harm. I wonder yes. how he Wonderful. truly feels about this. Yes. Thank you. In real life, to not the presentation. Stuff that was filmed on here was different in real life, but some of it still actually happened. Here on behalf of Her Majesty. Location desk, chair, the coronet of the Prince of Wales. If you want to make the Queen very happy indeed, you'll let her have those back. <laughs> Thought you might be thinking. I imagine they're no different from the thoughts the Duke had about the royal family almost every day he was alive. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mohammed El Fay just made the Queen of England very happy indeed. <laughs> Mr. Al Fayed, the owner of Harrods. I suppose I'd better sit with him this time. Might be nice. And as the official sponsor today, he will have that expectation. Oh, and Porchy, too. Can I leave that with you? No. Afraid you've got me. Your Royal Highness. <laughs> I realize I'm no substitute for the big chief. Special gifts for the boss lady. Ah, oh, that it gets me anyway. Boss lady seems allergic to me. Well, that makes two of us. Surely not. <laughs> Lady, Lady Rain. A wicked stepmother. Do you know her nickname? No. Acid Rain. Acid Rain? Mumu. Father. What was his name? Ali Ali. In your family say things twice, twice. No, no. <laughs> but they do, do. There's royalty here. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> My son, Dodi. Your Highness? Dodi Dodi. Or just Dodi. What? He's like, huh? It worked out well. I was worried I'd been rude, but as it turns out, a match made in heaven. All right, that was episode three. I will have to go and look more into his real life and the real situation. Because I did read up a little bit, but I didn't read up a lot. I know that Princess Diana's stepmom was involved. I know he had already made a name for himself before the point that they show in here. Just like scraped the surface. Like I said, very different episode from all the other ones. Looking at things from a very different perspective. And it really kind of takes you through that whole lifespan. All the way to when he's old. At Sidney Johnson's life from when he was fairly young all the way to when he died. And looking at the guy's kid's life from when he was first born all the way till middle ages or whatever. I found it interesting. And the different ways that people look at this same stuff. His perspective for what was going on versus Sidney's perspective versus other people's perspectives. Interesting stuff, at least to me. That's all I got for you this week. I will see you next week. Bye. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want more content, click subscribe. If you click that little bell and click all, then you'll get more content notifications.